What's up YouTube, this is Jeremy again with another Audacity Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to be looking at how we can take conversational, off-the-cuff audio and make it sound a little bit better with a couple quick edits. So first, let's take a look at what we're working with. This is a piece of audio I just recorded. I'm going to play it for you now so you can hear what it sounds like. This is an example of an off-the-cuff conversational recording. This is uh, not scripted, so uh, it's going to have some uh, stuff we might want to cut out later. Also, I've taken off the pop filter so you can hear those plosives pop. All right, there's some room for improvement in there. So I'm going to demonstrate a couple things we can do to step up this recording a little bit. First thing, let's cut out some of those ums. The thing about conversational audio is you don't want to over edit. Leaving in a couple of those ums will help your audio continue to sound spontaneous and natural. But some of the ums are just a little bit distracting. For example, uh, not scripted, so don't think we need that one. So here's the first um right here. Uh, and I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit here, make sure I get the entire um there. And we can even select some of this empty space. And I've got it selected. You can see the selection with that white. Now I can hit delete to remove that chunk. Now let's see what that bit sounds like without the um. Of conversational recording. This is not scripted, so uh, it's going to have some sounds better to me. And we caught a second uh in there, which is like an um. Let's make sure we get the whole thing. Uh, so this one's a little bit tricky because you can hear it's starting to turn into the word it's. We don't want to lose any of that it's, so we got to find just the right place to cut. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, it's sounds like about here. It's going okay, so we don't want to cut this. This is when it's starting to form the word it's. It's going but everything on this side is an uh. Uh, we can get rid of that. And always, always listen to see what the edit actually sounds like not scripted, so it's going to have some uh, stuff we might want to cut out. That sounds pretty good. Now you can see here, if we zoom in a little bit, what's that? Uh, it's a little like tongue click or a mouth sound. For the most part, we want to try to remove mouth sounds. Those never really sound particularly good. There's an argument for leaving some ums to make it sound conversational, but mouth sounds always sound a little bit gross, so we're going to remove that. All right, now let's see what we got. I'll start from about here. Recording, this is not scripted, so it's going to have some uh, stuff we might want to cut out later. You can hear I left a little bit of uh, uh, stuff we might want to cut out later. I think that actually sounds better with that there. It sounds more like a natural speaking, like these things are occurring to me as I'm saying them. It's kind of personable for this kind of podcast. Let's say we're doing kind of a conversational podcast. It sounds more human, so we're going to leave it. I think this is a good example of an uh that's better to keep. Which ums and uhs and filler words like like you want to remove, that's up to you and how much time you have to put into editing. It's also kind of one of those things that you'll develop an ear for, so you'll start to hear which ums and uhs sound like something you'll want to keep as part of just a natural conversational speaking style, and which ones you'll want to remove because they're distracting. I think we've cut the right ums and uhs. What else can we do to improve our audio? Well, we can remove this empty bit up front here. Don't need that. Select and delete. There's a little bit of space here. I'll show you what I mean. Some uh, stuff. But because it sounds like I'm thinking about what I'm about to say, it actually sounds more natural with this little space here. If the space was too long, I might trim it down a bit. And you know what, I might actually trim this down just a little bit, keeping most of that space. 
but tighten it up a little bit. See what that's like. It's going to have some, uh, I think I can tighten it up a little bit more. See what that sounds like. It's going to have some uh, stuff we might want to cut out later. Yeah, so I've kept a little bit of a space. That sounds natural. If we were to remove every single space, every single gap, then your speech audio will sound like there's no room to pause and breathe. Now we don't want breathing sounds, but we do want little spaces so it doesn't sound like we're just breathlessly going on and on. It's good to have little spaces, little pauses. You can use those for emphasis and it just lightens up the listening process. But like I said, if you just go through, if you remove every single space, then it sounds like you're never breathing and uh, that becomes a little distracting. There's, there's a kind of unnatural quality that your listeners will hear even if they don't know exactly what is making them uncomfortable about the recording, I guarantee if you have a whole hour podcast episode and you're not stopping for a breath the whole time because you've removed all of those gaps, it's going to be unnerving to your listeners, even if they don't know exactly what is unnerving about it. So we do want to keep some of those gaps. All right, now let's see what we can do with this chunk here. Also, I've taken off the pop filter so you can hear those plosives pop. So here's an example of an edit that you might need to do if you don't have a pop filter with your own recording device. So when I said plosives pop, that P sound, and we can see what it looks like right here, it's kind of loud. It has this uh, burst of air hitting the microphone quality to it that's kind of unpleasant. Plosives pop. There's a couple things we can do to fix it. The first thing, I'm just going to select that popping close of sound, that air hitting the microphone sound there. I'm going to open up my effects menu, and I'm going to go to fade in. So this is going to decrease the audio at the beginning, so that initial pop is going to be lessened. Let's see what that's like. Plosives pop. Hmm. It's still a little bit harsh, so I'm going to use my trusty envelope tool up here, which I can click this icon, or I can hit F2. I know I'm going to want the rest of this audio track to be normal, so I'm going to set two keyframes on either side here. Actually, I'm going to move this keyframe a little bit closer because it's just the sound I want to get rid of. Now I'm going to select somewhere in the middle, squeeze it down. I'm actually going to put another little keyframe here. That's going to reduce the volume. Let's see what that's like. Those plosives pop definitely lessens the effect, but now you're not really getting that P sound at all. So let's increase the volume there a little bit. All right, let's try that. Those plosives pop. That's pretty good, actually. I'm going to do the same thing to this pop sound. Don't want that. Do effect fade in. Let's see if that's good enough. Explosives pop. It's pretty good for that one. And then there's that final P popping sound. This one I'm just going to use my envelope tool because it'll do in a pinch. Don't need that fade in effect necessarily. All right, let's try that. Explosives pop. Much better. So those popping plosive sounds, the P sound pushing the air directly into the microphone, that unpleasant sound is lessened. Now, another thing you might run into in your recordings is over sibilance. Over sibilance. That's when your S's are hitting a little too hard. You can see there's an S sound in this word. So, so. Now that S is not too hard, but just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to step up that S sound so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to effect amplify. Now that S sounds going to be a lot louder. Did so. You see what I mean? So. So if your S sounds are a little too harsh, there's a couple things you can do. One is you can just use this envelope tool, lickety split, just shrink that down a little bit. So, another thing I'm going to show you is a low pass filter. This is another great way to get rid of that over sibilance, that too loud S sounds, that hissing noise. Depending on your microphone quality 
and your recording conditions and your audio settings, you might get really harsh S sounds. So if you're running into the same issue, this is an easy fix. So I've selected my S sound that I want to take down a notch. I'm going to go to Effect, and then I'm going to do a Low Pass Filter. Basically, the Low Pass Filter is going to take all the sound in our selection here, and it'll filter so everything below this frequency it lets through. So Low Pass is lower frequencies get let through. So we're specifying our cap for what frequencies we're going to let through if they're below this. Now a lot of that harsh sibilance sound, that's going to be in the 4000 to 10,000 hertz range. So I'm going to let this kick in at around 4000 hertz. You might have to play with these settings depending on what's going on with your audio. But let's try this for starters and see where we get. So some of that harshness has been taken off a little. I mean, this is a pretty dramatic effect because I amplified that S sound, but it's sounding a little bit better than it was. To get that to really sound better in this case though, since I amplified it, it's probably best if I just take my envelope tool and uh, bring down that audio volume in this little S section that's hitting a little too harsh. So sometimes you need to do a combination of things. So it's that's better, that's sounding a little more natural, not too jarring. Now if you're noticing a lot of over sibilance, a lot of really harsh sounds when you hit your S's in your recorded audio, you can actually run a low pass filter on the whole thing. The problem is it's going to filter everything and uh, if you paint with too broad a stroke, you might miss some of that detail work. So best quality audio is you're doing some spot edits as you go. In a pinch though, you can run the whole thing through a low pass filter and just get all of that over sibilance in one go. I'm not gonna go too far into this today, but if you're noticing a lot of low rumbly vocal quality, this is for people with really deep voices, so it's not really something I have to worry about. But if you're working with audio from people who are blessed with those deep, bassy, resonant voices, you may also need to do a high pass filter to filter out some of that really low rumble sound, because that can sound a little harsh too. And if you do need that high pass filter to filter out the low rumblies, it's going to be found in the effects menu as well high pass filter. It's telling me I, I need to select some audio. Let's do that again. And if you do need that high pass filter, you can find that in the effects menu as well. Have I mentioned mouth sounds yet? We want to get rid of them. Every single one of them. So here's another project I recorded to help us identify the mouth sounds so we can cut them out. Here's a recording with some Examples of mouth sounds that you don't want. Did you hear any of those? Let me show you. Here's a recording. A lot of times you'll hear sounds like this at the beginning or end of a word. In order to speak, your lips need to move, and sometimes the microphone is going to pick up that lip motion in a way that you don't want. So a lot of times that can look like some minor fluctuations here. There's a pretty simple fix once we've identified the offending mouth sounds. We just cut it out. Here's a recording with some examples of examples of Here's another one you might notice. A lot of times before people start speaking, they draw a sharp, quick inhalation of breath. Now this can show up in your recorded audio, but it doesn't sound too great. The thing is, we want to keep the space sometimes, but we want to get rid of that inhalation. So I'm just going to select this area. I'm going to go to Generate Silence and hit OK. Now instead of that sharp inhalation, it's just silence. Let me show you. Examples of mouth sounds. This may sound tedious, but believe me, audio quality is a huge factor in retaining listeners. You want your audio to sound as good as possible, and even for unscripted conversational podcasts, there's edits you can do to get your audio to sound better.
So today we talked about cutting out unnecessary pauses, as well as which pauses to keep, getting rid of filler words like um, uh, and like, as well as when to keep them sometimes to retain that natural speaking quality. We also talked about using the low pass filter in the effects menu for getting rid of harsh over sibilance in our S sounds. This can also sometimes show up with our SH sounds. And we talked about using our fade in and our envelope tool to soften those popping plosives. You'll especially get those popping plosive sounds if you don't have a pop filter. Now if you are recording at home, I will go ahead and recommend that you invest in a pop filter because this is quite possibly the cheapest accessory you can get for your recording setup. This can save you some time from having to finesse your plosives and you can get one of these pop filters for like 10 bucks. Usually they'll clip right onto your microphone. So it's a good investment if you have an extra 10 bucks lying around and do want to put it to good use for your podcast. There's all kinds of things you can do to improve your audio quality. The most important thing I can recommend for you going forward is to just experiment, try new things, listen to your audio. That's going to be it for this video. Do you have any questions about anything we covered so far? What would you like us to cover next time? Leave a comment below. And of course, remember to like and subscribe if you liked this and you want to see more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.